Amen. Amen. Y'all ready for some preaching? Amen. We're going to look at the plaques tonight. What we got over here? What is this? Plaques. Is that what they hid in? Yeah. Well, it was those spies. I want to preach to you a little bit tonight on playing hide-and-go-seek. Y'all know how to play hide-and-go-seek? But what about playing hide-and-go-seek in the devil's neighborhood? No. Well, that's what they did. Those spies had gone into Jericho, and the walls of Jericho represented the world. They were worldly fortified. They had been built up so they could protect themselves. They didn't have no faith in God. They didn't want Jesus Christ. All they wanted to do was take care of their selves and don't worry about anybody else. These spies had to go inside those worldly walls and they began to have to hide because they were spotted right away. Isn't it amazing how easy it is to find a believer this day and time? I mean, you can spot them for a mile. They don't look like everybody else. They're not doing what everybody else does. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's what happened. Let's look at the scripture right quick. Like the Bible says in Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 1, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. They went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Verse number 2 is our key verse tonight. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight out of the children of Israel to search out the country. They knew quick as they walked in the gate that they were there, and the king said, go find them. But they had to hide, didn't they? So they were hunted while they were there. Anybody here ever been hunted before? Oh, wait a minute. Now y'all played hide and go seek, didn't you? Well, somebody was hunting you if you were playing hide and go seek. Me and my brothers like to go up into the mountains and hunt elk, and we were there a couple of years ago, and while we were going up a high ridge, we looked off, or my baby brother went, and I looked around, and I thought, what is, what's he whistling at? And he went, and I went, he went, and I, I thought, he's lost his mind. He said, I said, what? He said, and I looked, and there was a black bear, about as far as the length of this sanctuary from us, just sitting there by a log watching us while we were going up the ridge. I thought, man, what's been to happen next? And then all of a sudden, Alan, he's big enough to scare the bear off. He got to roaming back and forth because he can't, he's looking way out to under 150 yards. The thing's about 30 yards from us. And I don't know, we hunting the elk, but that bear is hunting us. Now the devil is the king of Jericho. And he sent his demons out to hunt these missionaries down, but these missionaries has got the upper hand. God has sent them in there. God has prepared a place for them. And God has got them some what? Plaque. Say it with me. One, two, three. Plaque. How in the world can they hide under something like that? Y'all think Brother Ray Hall could get under that and hide? I'd like to see him try, wouldn't you? I mean, these guys were hunted, and I, I'm going to say they were even had. Not only did he know that they came into Jericho, but they knew exactly where they went. For you see, whenever the children of Israel came across Jordan and the water backed up on in heat, automatically Jericho began to tremble, thinking they're going to get us. So they were watching the spies that were trying to spy out Jericho. Whenever they came in through the gate, somebody said, there they are. There's a Christian right there. They don't walk like everybody else. They don't talk like everybody else. They don't look like everybody else. They're different because God lives in their heart. Boy, all of a sudden they watched them all the way to Rahab's house. They went and told the king, said, we know exactly where they are. The king sent out soldiers to find these guys, hunt them down, and the demons went out and they started looking for them. And they went right to where they were. So I'm going to say they were had. They were had. But, but, but whenever they got there, something very strange happened. Come on, Brother Ray, I'm going to need you. Y'all give him a hand. Yay! 
the deal is, I, I believe that they were under the flag. I don't believe they were just behind it. I believe they were under inside the flag. Cause look, I mean, they're up on the roof, and the roof ain't very wide. The roof might be as wide as the top of the city wall, uh, maybe about like one of these pews over here. I mean, these soldiers, look, like, wait, wait, before you go to hide, hold on just a second. These soldiers are sent out by the devil himself to go find Brother Ray. And they're, hey, whenever they, they they're, he's in Rahab's house, we know exactly where he's at. Do you think they just, Rahab said, don't come in here, y'all stay out. Uh, they're down there by the Jordan River, they left out a while ago. And those spies said, oh yeah, no problem, you're a very reputable not. We're coming in because somebody said they came into your house. We're coming in here to look where they are. They, they turned everything over. They looked all in the house. There wasn't anywhere there. So now then, I just imagine maybe there's some of them outside the window going down the street, knocking on the door saying, hey, have y'all seen these two guys that came in from Israel? They're going to they're gonna tear our country down. They're going to kill everybody in Jericho. They're going to burn the city down with fire. Is there any way that you, and every redneck up and down the hallway got his 30 out 6 out and said, ain't nobody coming in here taking our place over. We'll find them too. I mean, you got soldiers looking for them. You got people looking for them. Everybody in Jericho is looking for Brother Ray Hall. But he's hid. Now just show us how that you hide. Let me help you. Let me help you out just a little bit. You're gonna have to lay down or something. Let me help. Yeah, you're getting close now, Tim. Let me. Do you, does anybody see him anymore? Is he too fat? Somebody say no. <laughs> Y'all want to let him back out or you want to keep him in there the whole time I'm preaching? Leave him in there. They said leave him in there. They're looking for him. What? Had what? Spies had. Sonny, you think you can? Y'all want? Do y'all want brother Sonny in there too? Come on down! Come on, brother Sonny. They want you to get in there too. They were two spies. Come on, brother Sonny. They're that 
knew where you were at. There's no way they could have hid in that. I want to tell you tonight that what they were hid in was Jesus Christ. They were hid in the grace of God. God, that old song that he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. I'm glad that God can hide us from the devil, amen. And every now and then, we just need to be hid. I, I don't like to be exposed. I'll, a lot of times I wind up in front of a lot of people telling people what the Bible's got wrote down in it, but there's a lot of times I just like to hide. Can I get an amen right there? I mean, just <laughs> just get away. And, and, and my daddy says, son, I said, daddy, why didn't you call me whenever you went fishing? He says, son, son. Sometimes I just like to go fishing by myself, amen, and just get away from everything. And the Lord allows that in our lives. He hides us from the devil. The devil would take you tonight, if you're a believer tonight, or a non-believer that might get saved, uh, the devil would love to have your life right now. But the grace of God has got you hid tonight and there's no way that he could find you even if he wanted to. The grace, the flax of God has got you here. There's a variety in this thing. You know what they used flax for? You know what it was for and what they were hiding in? It was to make clothes out of it. They used that stuff that they might be able to weave it together to make some of the earliest uh, fashionable clothes that there were. I'm going to let you hold some of it. You can pass it around. Hand that down to your neighbor whenever you get through with it and let them hand it around. So go ahead and pass it on. Let her hold it. There you go. All right. You're going to let you touch it. Just pass it on down to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's Brother Ray's shoes made out of this stuff. That This is actual flax. It was grown in America, but some of the first that was grown was grown overseas where we find this story at. Here you go, hand some of that out for me, brother. Let, let some folks. Flax is a pretty amazing material. It it really wasn't. No, it, it don't smell good. It's got to be what? This ever has been what? There's a variety in this flax. A lot of different uses that you can have. Hey, any of you ever heard of toe sack? You remember what toe sack smell like? Toe sack made out of flax. You think about uh, tapestries that are on the wall that way back yonder people had. Y'all give me your attention for a minute. I'm going to tell you something about flax, and then we're going to give an invitation. And if you're lost and the devil's after you, you can be saved tonight. You can get hid in Jesus Christ. But this flax is a, a variety of uses. You can actually get online right now and buy flax clothing, flax purses, bags, satchels, all kind of stuff made out of flax. Let me say that Jesus is not just for saving somebody's soul from hell. He is good for that, amen. He is good for the salvation of a soul. But once he saves your soul, if you will continue to let him do things in your life, you will find that there is a variety of things that God can do in your life. He can keep a marriage together. Can I get an amen right there? He can take a young guy that is wanting to get into alcohol and dope with the rest of his friends and keep him from losing his life on earth. There's a variety of things that Christ can do while you're here on the earth. But the main thing that he can do is hide you from the devil. See, this stuff right here would have been dried out real good and after it was dried out it would have been beat down real good and then it would have come apart and those fine little hairs that you had that smelled so bad a while ago would have come out of it and they were letting them dry up on the roof in order that they might have made their clothing or whatever the case might have been out of it there's a variety it's a variety of a very a variety of things that can be done with it but not only do i see that there's a variety in it but I, I also, whenever I was studying about this flax, I noticed it was a virgin plant. It don't have to have another plant in order to pollinate. It's self-pollinating. Whenever the flower busts out on it, it automatically, through the opening up, pollinates itself. Let me 
they say that Jesus came from a virgin. His mother, Mary, received him in her stomach from God above. She didn't have to house anybody here on this earth. The Lord did it all, and this plant is Jesus Christ. Whenever he was hid, I could see him, but the devil couldn't see him because God had set it up that he might be hid. I, I've noted the value of Jesus whenever I begin to think about this, and this, this, val, this plant is very valuable, and, I, and the more that, y'all remember toe sacks? You remember how rough they are whenever you first get a hold of them, but when they lay around the barn for a while, what happens to them? They soften up, don't they? That material made out of flax was the same way. It's the only material on earth. The more that you use it, the more valuable it becomes. It starts out at one price, but then a little bit later on, it's fit for the king to wear. Then the kings and the higher people would get a hold of it, and they'd make their clothing out of it after it already been broken in. If you'll ever take Jesus and begin to use him in your life, he'll become more valuable than just a savior from hell. He'll be a savior on a daily basis doing things for you that you never could have imagined. There's a vibrancy also in this mystery tonight. This vibrancy that we note about it is the color of the flag. It can be dyed into just about any color that you want to dye it into. But there's one key feature about coloring the flax. Y'all ever dye anything? Y'all ever tie-dye a shirt? He got a tie-dye shirt on. Wad that thing up, stick it down in there, and pull it back out. They do the same thing with the flax. But the key motive for the flax, the key issue on the flax is it's got to be the right consistency in order for it to take the dye. It's a very oily plant. And the oil's got to come out of it before the dye can go into it. It's got to get just to the right color, and whenever it gets to the right color, at the right point in time, they put it into the dye, they take it back out of the dye, and it receives the color really good. Did you know whenever Jesus was born, it wouldn't have done any good for Herod to kill him whenever he was a baby? You know, he tried to kill him when he was a baby. They tried to kill Jesus when he was a baby. Herod tried to kill Jesus, but it, it wasn't time for him to die. It wouldn't have done any good for Jesus to have died as a baby. And then later on, he was doing a lot of miracles, and they tried to take him by force one time, and he just slipped right through them, and they couldn't get a hold of him. There was other times that they would have killed Jesus, but it was not time. It wouldn't have done any good when he was feeding the 5,000 for him to take in his life because it was not time for him to give his life yet. He was not ready to become the sacrifice until after that night in Gethsemane whenever he prayed, Father, not my will, but thine be done. And the soldiers came in, and Judas kissed him on the cheek, and they took him away, and they began to take him, and they began to whip him, and they began to beat him. And whenever they took the cat of nine tails, and they began to rack it upon his back, and he gave his life willingly at just the right time to die went in. Not one day too late, not one day too soon, but on that same special day that Israel had marched across Jordan, the same time of the year when they had come out of Egypt, the red blood had been applied to the doorposts and they crossed the Red Sea and it was the same time same day of the year that they crossed Jordan and quick as they come across if you'll read it they celebrated the Passover and Jesus died on the Passover he is the perfect lamb not one day too late not one day too early but Jesus died for you right on time so that you could trust him right on time you can come to him tonight as our musicians begin to come you can come to him tonight and you can accept him into your heart. The devil may be hunting for you right now, but God has some flax, some grace. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. They're hid in Jesus. The devil can't find him. The soldiers couldn't find him. They should have been able to find him. They should have been able to find him. How hard is it? to take 
take a 14-foot space on top of Rahab's house where she's drying out a reed in order to make some clothing out of and kick it over and find a couple of spikes. That ain't hard to do. But they couldn't find it. I'm going to tell you, one of them spies may have been up under there and almost ready to sneeze because it's so dusty. And the Holy Ghost probably put his finger on his nose and said, not right now. The devil couldn't find them. There was no way. He wanted to. But they were hid by God. Jesus has got me hid tonight from the devil. The devil can't get to me. <laughs> the devil can't have me. He cannot get me because I have been saved. I have been born again. And these 